What's up, Buck Doug with Dini in the garage? I have a confession to make. I've been driving drunk all week. Now, don't get alarmed. I'm not talking about the wacky water, but I have been high as hell all week driving around in my Jeep. Let me give you the backstory. So last week, uh, some of you know if you watched some of the videos, my dad had this Jeep. This is the 4.7. This is my daily, the V8. This is the nice one. I was driving my lifted 2000, it's really an off-road rig, it was never meant to be dailyed anymore, but dad needed to borrow a car, so I was driving around in Willie. I love Willie, man, Willie's great, he's got great throttle response, I have the engine uh, tuned and modded for torque, so he's fun to drive, but he's a dog, man. He's got 213,000 miles on a four liter with big tires uh, and low gearing in the axles, he's not meant to go fast, he chirps off the line and then just falls flat. In fact. I had him out on the highway and like 55 is all I got. <laughs> After 55, like you're straining the heck out of that poor little four liter trying to get it more, which is fine. That's, it's not, it wasn't built to be a highway rig or a daily rig. Anyway, so I get back in the 4.7 and the 4.7 never impressed me as being particularly fast. It's not like blistering speed, breakneck speed. I got to drive Project Dan H's 5.7 Hemi Commander. That thing put me in my seat and it kept me in my seat. So after driving that, getting back in my 4.7, it's nice, it's fun driving a V8. You feel the difference coming from a four liter to the V8 to the 4.7. And I've always babied this thing because I'm, before I got a 4.7, I heard all the terrible stories dropping valve seats, collapsed lifters. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna enjoy this Jeep for what it is, enjoy the little bit of extra towing capacity, and just, just drive the darn thing. Well, after being in Willie all week, last week, and really not being able to get off the line at a stop sign or a stoplight, I've been finding myself in what I call the sweet spot. The 4.7, at least in the WJ, with the uh, 545 RFE and the 4.7 Verilock differentials, there's this sweet spot. If you off the line at a stop sign or a, a red light, if you ease into the throttle until about 10 miles an hour and then you give it a little over three quarters throttle, you'll wind up quick, you hit three grand and it puts you in your seat a little bit. It's quick. It doesn't keep you there, but it's really very satisfying. It's just, oh, it's so good. Uh, and from somebody who's always ever driven four liter Cherokees and Grand Cherokees, to have something that'll put you in your seat at all is, it's something. So I've been finding myself all week really jimmy jamming that go button and just launching at basically every single um, stop sign and red light I come to. And uh, I went I went to fill up and I, I got nine miles to the gallon. <laughs> I got nine miles to the gallon this week. Also, it was filled up on Sunday and it's Wednesday. I had to fill up. So um, yeah, I, I didn't think I could do that bad in this Jeep. Uh, my, my usual, I, t I actually did a video on how surprised I was at what how good the mileage was in this 4.7. Usually driving around town, it's very hilly where I'm at in northwestern New Jersey. Uh, it's all back roads winding, so it's not a ton of stopping and going. Uh, I usually get like 17, and then out on the highway I can get in the low 20s, uh, depending on how I'm driving. That goes down sharply once you cross over about 75. If you're going above 75, the, the bell curve does whatever bell curves do that aren't good. Um, but I didn't think I could do that bad in a 4.7, so without realizing it, I've been babying it this whole dang time. So I kind of just wanted to share that story with you. The sweet spot in the 4.7 is something I like the most about this Jeep. It's very cushy inside to begin with, leather seats, heated seats, it's clean inside, it's not all ripped up, it's not, I didn't put a loud muffler on it. This Jeep's stock too. I actually have a cold air intake to K&N, full K&N with the air dam sitting in my garage. Eric gave it to me. He was on his brother's 4.7 HO back in the day. They took it off and they sold it. He said, hey man, it's collecting dust. Why don't you go get it? I haven't put it on for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is time. I just haven't had the time. Two, it needs a new cone filter. I have to go out and just buy one. And three, I just don't know if I want to because once you put the first thing on, man, it's just all downhill. And this Jeep has been good to me in its stock form. I've done a little bit of preventative maintenance. We did the lifters on it. Uh, man, if you got a 4.7, let me know what you think. Eric said that it makes it a lot louder in a good way, putting the cold air on, which makes sense. Four liters the same way you put that cold air on and now you're hearing things. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I've done a lot of hating on cold air intakes on this channel, but this is a correct one. I always give the caveat, unless you get a correct one, you know, don't be 
putting stovepipe and off-the-shelf uh, Spectre parts together from Advance and think you're actually getting a cold air intake, but uh, this one is designed by K&N. The numbers are there. I don't know if you've seen it gains. It probably just makes it louder and puts your MPG through the floorboards, but I don't know, man. I guess you guys, let me know what you think about throwing the K&N on this bad boy. Again, with the air dam, everything, uh, considering it's a daily, and I really want to just leave it alone and keep it stock. It kind of needs a new muffler, and I just want to go with a walker, like stock or as close to stock as you can get. Um, not trying to drive around with another droney Jeep. I thought I needed earplugs driving around in Willie. He's got the big tires whining, he's got the cold air, the exhaust has more leaks than the Iraqi Navy. I thought I was gonna be deaf by the time I got to work, so I don't want that for this Jeep, and I'm just worried, I don't know, maybe I'm going down the wrong path, but how does a monkey with a toolbox own a vehicle and not make it their own, right? So let me know what you guys think, and let me know if you have a 4.7, do you know that sweet spot I'm talking about? You gotta ease in, and then you get to about three grand, and it just, just real quick, just puts you in your seat. And uh, as Wrangler Star would say, it gives you the fizz. All right, so leave me that comment down in the squawk box. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I almost forgot to tell you guys the X Factor. Uh, for me, music absolutely has a direct impact on my MPG. And this week, I've been listening to nothing but Shooter Jennings, Waylon Jennings' son. That song, The Gunslinger, every time that thing comes on, I'm driving like grandma. All of a sudden, halfway through, I'm on a back road doing 75 miles an hour, down there drifting the turns because I feel like a gunslinger. Yeah, man, Shooter Jennings, that makes your uh, MPG go through the floorboards, too. You guys got any songs that make your... Uh, uh, MPG go through the floorboards. Another one, it's totally abstract and the opposite of Shooter Jennings. Uh, it's called Pedal to the Metal by Kazer. It's this real abstract, uh, obscure rap song from the early 2000s. Look that thing up, man, and you will immediately get a 30 over ticket on the highway. Anyway, let me know. Talk to y'all later.